Question. Would you want to be rich one day? Eat whatever you wanted, drink whatever you wanted, live in a mansion Hollywood Hills status? Because I did, and I low-key don't want it again. Also, no, I don't need any medication. Okay, I know I sound crazy. Who wouldn't mind being rich except poor people who hate the rich and maybe like smart decisions? Honestly, I always felt hating money was an excuse poor people gave for being poor. Like people purposefully out here wiping their ass with single ply because it's humble or something. Nah, it's because Charmin Ultra Soft costs 30 fucking dollars and the monthly toiletries budget is like seven. Wait, isn't your monthly toiletry- Yes, 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 that was the joke. Now, what do we say about look Yep, I'm poor. Uh, who would have thought the guy in his room making YouTube videos is poor? Haha. <laughs> I'm poor, in debt, living in low income housing. I actually can't afford to go one more derogatory black stereotype deep. I literally do not have the funds for it. And yet, to be honest, I don't feel the way I do because I hate money or rich people. For one, I'm pretty easy to please when it comes to money. I really just want enough to buy Uber Eats whenever I want. I mean, there's this stigma on the rich, right? That they're evil, greedy, crusty old men who hate minorities, but also for some reason exclusively cheat on their wives with them. So that's the thing, but that's not it either. Actually, out of the two millionaires I've met, both of them have been the exact opposite. Uh, incredibly nice, young, don't hate minorities and would probably cheat on their wives with any color girl they like. But in fact, something that really stood out to me about these two was their kindness. And that kindness ended up being one of the prime reasons I'm not really about that seven figure life anymore. See, let me explain. So cut to June of last year, your boy is planning on taking a trip to a certain convention that a lot of you may know about. Here's a hint. It's a place where fans go to see their favorite creators and where creators go to get drunk, start drama and f it's a great time. Now, as time passed, not too long before the actual trip, this mentor of mine, uh, millionaire number one, dings me on his phone like, yo, Kurt, the weekend after the convention, I want to throw a mansion retreat for four days. It'll be in the Hollywood Hills, great view, surrounded by a lot of successful and ambitious people. Uh, you want to come? Well, last time I checked, I wasn't insane so of course I, I want to go and man I was hyped but after that week was done I left California depressed unsure and low-key mad so let's see how I got there oh yeah <laughs> so we got to this point via three particular observations I made on that trip first one first day the beach recognition that was really corny okay they all not gonna be clever Yo, okay. See, a lot of my colleagues, most of whom were way bigger and more important than me, decided that we should meet up on Huntington Beach just as a kind of little like, meetup so everyone can hang out without restrictions. Apparently one of those restrictions being closed. Anyway, so I'm like five minutes into the beach sesh and then all of a sudden I feel this wet, sour cream body on my back, almost like gripping my man tits. So this being the second time I feared a form of assault today, I turn around and it's freaking millionaire number two, who's pretty famous in the group in whom I had no idea it was here. So he greets me and I kind of make a mental note and as the day goes on, just see how people interact with him. You don't think that's a little weird? Actually, yeah, you're right. Can we just cut back to the store? This guy is constantly surrounded by people. They want to hang out with him, uh, talk to him, just occupy the same 10 foot radius as him. But from there, that just left a concerning thought in my brain. Would they really be all over him if he wasn't? This weird thought came up and I just kind of swept it under the rug like a responsibility and went on with the day. But little did I know this would be the start of the domino effect that led to a deep sadness at the end of the week. This happened on like day three and this is what we'll call the McAfee effect. Actually, I think it's pronounced McAfee. But, but there's no Mac in it, just the muck. Like, see, it's muck. That's what Google says. You gotta be kidding me, seriously? Don't look at me, it's you guys' language. <sighs> okay, the McAfee effect, even though it's definitely McAfee. So at this point, we're full swing into the convention. And I find myself at this panel about people who gained a following fast or, or something like that with my boy, Christian. Now there are four people on this panel, but this whole thing is only triggered by one of them. So close to the end, someone asked that girl something along the lines of how they felt about the year so far, or something like that. And mm, she said, oh, I'm actually doing horrible. I got kicked out of my apartment. I broke up with my boyfriend and I am not happy. Yikes. And then there's this silence over the room. And then all of a sudden, everybody clapped. 
and not the I'm sorry for you clap, hope you do better. Nah, man, like the congrats clap. Did everyone just clap for depression? So now I'm feeling a little more concerned than before. Like, I don't want to pull a McAfee. So you might have heard that name before. McAfee is the creator of the antivirus software, and he just kind of went off the deep end after establishing his company. And allegedly, don't quote me here and you'll see why in a second, he needs people to sh on his chest to stimulate him now. He's also Somalian pirate. Weird stretch, I know. But I promise it has a closer point. Money and success has taken a lot of people to a really bad place. Like, you don't gotta look far. Like, I don't wanna make a million dollars, and then the next thing you know, I'm, I'm naming my child a uh, blanket. But at this point, I was a little more rattled than when the first thing happened. Like, I still wanted this whole thing, but it's just something I took another mental note of. Which leads us to the mansion sadness. Oh, what a... What an interesting one, yes. Okay, so we're at the end of the week and finally it's time. We end up going to the mansion and like I said at the beginning of the video, there's free food, drinks, a soft bed, great people, like the whole nine yards. This is MTV Cribs, but if they let broke people live there, and by broke people like just me. Now the way this video has been going, y'all probably expecting me to say something like, I had an awful time or something bad happened. But if we're being honest, it was the best time of my life. I mean, dude, I'm at a mansion in the Hollywood Hills. I never thought I'd ever be here, but that's kind of the point. So after that time, I'm packing up and you know when you're leaving a vacation and you kind of hit the sadness that it's over? Well, I did uh, hard and thought, man, people who are rich and successful, how would they feel if they were losing all this? I mean, I'm at a mansion, partying it big, feeling like Ricky Rose popping bottles when he wasn't like, like drugging women. Maybe that was a bad example. I'm feeling like someone who doesn't drug women and is also rich. Like assume this is a constant life for someone who just has it and then they lose it. How would they feel? And I'm a weak dude, if I lost this, I would be hurt. Like I'm hurt now and I had it for four days. What happens when you attach your wealth to your work when you're this high up? So eventually I'm on my plane back home and I'm really just feeling this wave of, yo, f this. Like the thing with millionaire number one, if he wasn't famous, would people be swarming him like that? Like I'm broke and ugly. If you like me, you like me. There's no reason to lie. Then there's that girl on the panel. What if I hit success? and then it affected me emotionally. Then I thought of the mansion. What if I attach my worth to my work and I end up losing everything? Yeah, I was a RIP. So a couple days later, I get a package in the mail. I go to open it up and it's a freaking laptop. A whole ass new laptop addressed to me. It's weird, right? Well, I didn't mention this, but at the mansion, uh, the millionaire peep that I had a terrible old laptop, um, maybe some of y'all have seen it before I've posted it, and offered to get me a new one. And I thought he was kidding, but lo and behold, here it was right in front of me. And I remember him saying he did it because he believed in me and he wanted to see me grow and just because he could. And this all kind of brought me back to the middle ground. So what I'm getting at with this whole thing here is that this guy, he's not crazy, he's not corrupt, he's just a good guy. <laughs> now, I'm sure on the outside he dealt with issues, maybe similar to the ones we expressed earlier, but the, the man is managing, yo. And I think with every phase in life, you gotta adjust and acclimate. And I mean, sure, I don't think I want extravagant wealth and success, but it's not a huge deal. If I could still do little things like that, I'd be pretty chill. We'll, 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 we'll keep it at I just want enough to where I can get Uber Eats every day. What's up, y'all? Uh, thank you for watching that video. Uh, it has been a pleasure once again. If you like this video, check out my poorly titled Manipulating Girls on Purpose question mark video. Um, it's pretty dope. Uh, you might like that. Big shout out to Mads, who's on call, for the help with the thumbnail as usual. And I also have a meet tomorrow, so uh, I will be jumping over bars when you're watching this. Thank you guys for watching. And I'm out. Say bye, guys, and don't be offensive. Oh. All right, that close enough. Peace. Oh, yeah, say bye, Crow. All right, that was, I got cut. <laughs>